Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in for Monday, June 1st, 2020. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first wonderful precept. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking or in my way of life. This morning we're finishing the section on proliferation and views from Ajahn Suchito's book, Kama and the End of Kama. Views have their value. They provide us with a summary of experience that we can then store away for easy reference. <clears throat> with a view, we have a standpoint. But the problem is that standpoints offer a false sense of solidity. People can blindly adopt just about any religious, political, or even nutritional view just because it offers a solid place from which to view oneself and everyone else. Then emotional activity and mental comma get generated accordingly. For example, from time to time we have people in the monastery who are very diligent in the meditation hall, but difficult to work with in the kitchen because they have, have to have things done their way. That's not right, is it? Yet generally their actions are based on what they find to be the most effective and efficient way of operating in order to provide food for the community. So that sounds right. Then maybe someone talks during times of silence, which is wrong, but they felt that someone needed a little, a bit of contact or that some lightheartedness was good medicine. Action based on compassion and non-involvement to routine sounds like a wise point of view, right? Then someone wants to sit when it's walking time, walk when it's sitting. Maybe that's what's right for their practice. But we might feel, well, we had an agreement to operate in a certain way to strengthen the group resolve and minimize disturbance, and people are expected to let go of their personal perspectives. That's right, too. Right carries a very powerful energy, doesn't it? You can get really convinced and really angry with right. Now, I'm not saying that matters of behavior aren't to be addressed. That's one of the values of spiritual friendship, but those values operate through an understanding of kama, and that old kama is to be investigated from a place of compassion and equanimity. That is right view. It rules out proliferating over a specific piece of behavior and turning it into the view that he is this and she's one of those. If we form a self out of any pattern of behavior, our attitudes become stuck and painful. Even a good self ends up either intimidating me or letting me down when she or he doesn't live up to the image I've created of them. So the only standpoint for self that is useful to bear in mind is, I am the owner of my kama. Whatever kama I shall do for good or for ill, of that I will be the heir. There are no good and bad people, there's just bright and dark kama. If we see things that way, it helps us to view ourselves and others in a more understanding and compassionate way. We don't get stuck with self-images, because the view of kama also allows us to understand that kama is a changing process. If we set up the views, attitudes, and responses that fix people in their kama, then we support suffering. 
If we set up views, attitudes, and responses that allow intentions and values to change in a good way, we relate skillfully to comma. There can be an understanding of the behaviors, confused or bright, that drive all of us, rather than views that divide you and me and those other people. In this way, we set up the possibilities for our own and other people's release. When you get this message, you start to shift the intent of your practice from one of trying to have or be something to one of handling and penetrating the suffering involved with the me sense. Then there is a release that also brings out our potential for wisdom, purity, and compassion. And that's the aim of Dhamma practice, whether we're alone or with others, whatever's going on. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.